What's up guys, Asian here again with a uh, another update to the Somerset Isles um, expansion that's coming out. Uh, this time this is again a, a news article that um, Zas has released on their website. <clears throat> As you can see here, it was released uh, at the recording of this video uh, yesterday, April 11th. And this is pretty much uh, a bunch of details about jewelry crafting. So uh, Gina did tell us that they would release a article with the uh, specifics behind jewelry crafting, and so they managed to deliver. So let's go ahead and get through this article here and talk about the details behind jewelry crafting. Um, so this is just pretty much an introduction to jewelry crafting, it looks like. Yep, uh, it's all... Uh, basically what Rich Lambert has said about jewelry crafting, why they're introducing it, things like that, so that's not incredibly um, interesting. Uh, Alright, so here's a table of contents, so access to jewelry crafting, the stations, base materials, traits and trait materials, upgrade materials, the skill line, and any uh, FAQs that we might have. So access to jewelry crafting here, uh, in order to make use of jewelry crafting you must own ESO Somerset, you are not able to use a jewelry crafting station if you do not own the new chapter. This includes jewelry crafting stations purchased from Rit Master Rit merchants and placed in player homes, including your own. Uh, so this uh, is as clear cut as it can be, uh, jewelry crafting is entirely limited to those who have Somerset Isles, the expansion. Um, now, uh, that's... So this basically means it's not going to be in the base game, you need to have the expansion. Uh, that being said though, Morrowind was just released, uh, or I shouldn't say released, um, was put as part of the ESO Plus, um, and it's been about a year since Morrowind has came out. So it seems like they're going to be following this pattern of the next expansion that comes out, uh, wherever that ends up being. Uh, it's likely that they'll just make the content in Somerset available to the base game uh, if you have ESO Plus. Um, so. I mean, if you don't want to get Somerset, then that's kind of your decision. Uh, you will probably be able to get jewelry crafting in about a year when they release the next expansion. So uh, that's kind of a little bit of a bummer. Um, I don't think this will make jewelry crafting, you know, quote unquote, pay to win, um, because you can still trade uh, jewelry, um, you know, equip uh, crafted jewelry. Uh, but this is a bit of a bummer uh, for those of you guys who want to get, you know, like gold ebon rings or gold worm cult rings, uh, but you don't want to buy Somerset. So you can only get those now from the golden vendor if they're on sale, uh, as opposed to just upgrading your existing rings. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, but they did note, uh, mention that if you don't own Somerset, you can still harvest the resource nodes or acquire uh, items with the new uh, traits, but you can't make use of the resources you harvest to create or improve rings or necklaces. Um, you can still uh, sell them or you know trade them to people though. Uh, so now for the jewelry crafting stations, uh, so you'll they basically you'll find those in around other crafting stations already in Somerset. This is kind of a an artist rendition of what they'll look like. I don't think this is an in-game render. Or it could be. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, you will be able to create rings and necklaces uh, for all the game's crafted sets, um, and just like the other. Uh, crafting stuff, so you do need to have knowledge of a certain number of traits in order to craft it, so you know, the example here is for Hunting's Rage, you need to have six or more tra traits researched for rings if you want to craft a ring. So just based off this, you have basically uh, two different items you need to, need to research, one for rings and one for necklaces. That's kind of uh, something that we expected. Um, so at the jewelry crafting stations, you can pretty much do everything that you can already do, you know, create new jewelry, refine the materials, deconstruct the materials, upgrade jewelry, and research jewelry. Uh, now for deconstruction, they do have a note here uh, that you can only deconstruct jewelry acquired after the release of Somerset. So if you're um, not sure if it can be deconstructed, they are adding something to the tooltip that will tell you if it can be deconstructed or not. Uh, and you can purchase these from your the uh, Master Bit merchants, um, but again, if you don't have access to ESO Somerset, you can't use them. Uh, so you'll be able to get the normal, you know, no-set uh, jewelry crafting stations and probably a tunable crafting stations as well. Now for the base materials. So all that above was pretty much uh, material that we already knew from pre-existing articles and uh, you know videos from the pl players who went over for that playtesting a couple of weeks ago. So now all of this is going to be uh, new information. So uh, the base materials for jewelry crafting. To create your own jewelry, you must harvest unique jewelry crafting nodes called seams and collect the unrefined material called dust. You can then refine this material into ounces to use in your crafting. So this is pretty much follows the typical, you know, blacksmithing, clothing, and uh, woodworking where you have the raw material that you have to refine into the um, material that you use to actually craft uh, the item. 
uh, seams appear in the same kind of places that blacksmithing nodes appear in rocky outcroppings, cliff faces, and other stony areas, and they can be found all over uh, the Tamriel. I guess uh, a little bit of proofreading here would have been nice, Gina. Uh, the Tamriel. Um, I, that's that's not, I guess, proper English there. Uh, dust gathered from seams can be harvested by anyone, regardless of whether they own Somerset or not. But they can only be refined into ounces at the jewelry crafting station, so you can only create the ounces uh, if you have the expansion. Based on both your engraver passive level and character level, you are able to harvest different types of dust. So 1 to 25 is pewter, 26 to 50 is copper, CP 10 to 60 is silver, CP 70 to 140 is electrum, and CP 150 to 160 is platinum. So this means that you will need five additional skill points uh, in order to max out engraver. So this seems to be uh, more along the lines of uh, following the provisioning, uh, how many skill points you need to get up to CP 160 uh, provisioning. Uh, that was a six out of six, uh, so you will need five additional skill points. So um, that sh you should be able to get those skill points just from the sky shards um, and the uh, story quests in Somerset. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. You're going to need to reserve five skill points in order to create CP160 jewelry and that's um, disregarding the other passives nodes which you will probably want to invest in. Uh, so now for traits. Uh, so this is also some of this is new and some of this is old. Uh, so you can use jewelry crafting traits to apply unique bonuses to your items. This is pretty much what we already know. Uh, in addition to arcane, healthy, and robust it includes six new traits. Again something we already know. Acquiring the ability and materials to craft items with these traits is similar in some respects to traditional crafting skill lines, but there are some key differences with regards to how you can acquire jewelry with these traits and their materials. Uh, so uh, unlike the other crafting lines, it seems like there's going to be uh, unique ways in order to gain these new traits. So, you know, if you want to research, let's say, training or well-fitted in, in like an axe or something, you would just basically kill stuff until you get a training axe or a well-fitted uh, um, robe or something like that. Um, but it seems like for jewelry crafting you will not be able to just go out in the wild, kill mobs until you get the new traits. It seems like they're introducing new and unique ways in order to gain these traits. So uh, it seems like it's going to be a little bit of a grind in order to, you know, if you want to completely master jewelry crafting to research all of these traits. Uh, the new jewelry crafting traits and their materials have to be sought from very specific sources that are thematically appropriate to them, much like the way the Nerntone traits for weapons and armor are tied to Kraglor. And here's the information on the traits and where to get them. So Arcane, Healthy, Robust, those are pretty much base game stuff. They've been in the game since forever. Um, they, you can just re they drop randomly all over the world, uh, and you can just require them from the trait material from uh, refining jewelry crafting base materials, uh, and probably also from deconstructing them as well. Protective is a new trait which increases physical and spell resistance. So necklaces and rings with the protective trait have a rare chance to be found within undaunted chests. So those are the chests that you need to use undaunted keys to open. Uh, so those are the chests, uh, in other words, those are the chests you get your monster shoulders from. The trait material is called titanium and is acquired as part of daily dungeon rewards in the raw form. So you, you will need to uh, refine those raw forms and rarely in the refined form. So in order to create titanium, you need to basically refine 10 pieces of the raw form or be lucky enough to get the refined form in your daily dungeon rewards. So this seems like it's going to be a pretty easy, uh, easy trait to get uh, in terms of researching it as well as the trait material itself. Triune, which is basically the triglyph of jewelry, uh, so it increases health, stamina, and magicka. A researchable ring is awarded at the end of the Somerset main quest line, and a researchable necklace is awarded at the end of the Sigic Order quest line. So you will have to quest in order to get uh, those two items, uh, and so you're going to want to keep them in order to research them. Um, but after you research them, you can probably just make them again and you know sell them to other players. So at least right off the bat, right when Somerset's released, there's not going to be any Triune jewelry out on the Guild Traders until people finish up the quest lines and finish their research. The trait material is called Dawn Prism. It's acquired from jewelry crafting nodes throughout Tamriel, with a higher chance to be found in Somerset. In order to create Dawn Prism, you must refine 10 pieces of the material in its pulverized, or uh, uh, raw, form. Um, so this seems like it's going to be like uh, Viridian Dust and Morrowind. Uh, you know, it's whenever you uh, harvest a 
a node in, in Morrowind, you have a chance of getting Viridian Dust, which you can then refine uh, to create the, tr the, um, the material needed to craft buoyant armature stuff. Uh, so that's what uh, the route it seems like, except instead of any node, it's going to be only from Jewelry Crafting node, and instead of just in Morrowind, it's going to be anywhere in Tamriel. Uh, so I, I can foresee this being very useful for tanks, uh, Triune. Infuse, uh, it increases enchantment effectiveness, so that would be like your weapon damage enchant, uh, your your spell damage enchant, uh, you know, your magical regen glyphs, things like that. Necklaces and rings with the infuse trait have a chance to drop from Psychic Portals found all over Tamriel. So Psychic Portals are going to be a new sort of event that you will need to have the Psychic Order line in order to participate in. I believe you need a passive from that line uh, in order to participate in these events. Uh, so you will need to have access to Somerset in order to do these portals, it seems like. The trait material is called Arubic Ar Ar Amber. Uh, it's acquired from Psychic Portals with a rare chance for a refined form. Note that Psychic Portals only appear if you have the new Psychic Order skill line. In order to create Arubic Amber, you must refine 10 pieces of the material in its pulverized raw form. So it looks like Infused might be limited to those um, only who, ha who have access to Somerset. We're not 100% sure yet whether or not the Psychic Order skill line is restricted to only those with Somerset. I, we imagine it is. Um, so it does seem like Infused, if you want to get it, in, you know, a Infused Juliano's Neck or something, you will need to buy it off of a Guild Trader if you don't have access to Somerset. Uh, Swift, which increases movement speed. Uh, necklaces and rings with the Swift trait have a rare chance to be awarded when completing normal jewelry crafting writs, or crating writs, I should say, uh, according to this um, this spelling. Um, so this is going to be probably one that you're going to be able to find pretty easily. So they are introducing uh, the daily crafting writs for jewelry crafting, uh, as well as master writs as well. So you'll be able to find these uh, this researchable rings and jewelry uh, just from doing your daily writs. The trait material is gilding wax and it's purchased from master writ merchants for writ vouchers. Uh, I highly, I'm not sure uh, how expensive these will be, uh, but increasing movement speed as a uh, jewelry trait might be useful for PvP or for uh, for uh, crafting farmers, for, for node farmers. Harmony increases synergy effectiveness. Necklaces and rings with a harmony trait have a chance to be awarded as part of the regular rewards for completing weekly trial quests. Note that reward boxes from trial quests completed before the release of ESO Somerset do not contain jewelry with the harmony trait. So you will have to do your weekly trial quest, so that's the quest you pick up whenever you go into a trial. It, uh, it reward basically rewards a coffer uh, once a week, and that is uh, based on when you pick up the quest. It's not like a reset on Monday or anything like that. Um, and you will need to complete the quest after the release of Somerset in order to get the jewelry. Uh, so this uh, is probably also going to be uh, pretty quick and easy to farm. You know, just go into the Craglorns with your characters, do the daily quest, you know, do normal Ethereum Archive, just blow through it in 10 minutes and you have uh, a chance of getting uh, the necklace and ring. Now, I don't think it'll be tradable uh, because the drops from the uh, coffers typically are not tradable, except for the motifs, so the item drops, the set drops aren't tradable, so that's what I'm thinking is going to happen here as well. Um, so you might, and it's also a chance, so you might need to run through the trials a couple of times, uh, but we'll see what that, what that happens. Uh, the trait material is called Debellium, high chance to be acquired in refined form from weekly trial quest rewards. So this is again from the coffers. And Bloodthirsty, which increases damage against low health enemies. Necklaces and rings with the Bloodthirsty trait have a chance to be awarded when you complete the new Cyrodiil daily board quests, uh, not the repeatable quests. Uh, so the daily board quests are not the repeatable quests, so that's not the, you know, capture, keep, capture, uh, resource uh, quests. So it's going to be some new daily board quest that they're introducing with Somerset. Um, the trait material is Slaughterstone, acquired in refined form from the War Researcher vendor in Cyrodiil for AP. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much all the traits here. Uh, so you will need to do a little bit of grinding in order to get all these these traits. Uh, if you want to get them without buying them off the guild traders, I should say. Um, so you know you're going to have to do a little bit of PVPing in order to get bloodthirsty. So PVEers, if you kind of want to get nine out of nine out of your research traits, you're going to need to PVP a little bit. Uh, for those PVPers, if you want to get harmony, then you're going to want you're going to have to do. Uh, you know your weekly trial quest. I mean, you can just get to do it on normal. It's pretty easy. Uh, so you will have to do a little bit of grinding in order to get all these traits ready. 
So in addition, as with weapons and armor, you can deconstruct jewelry with one of the new traits to gain the material needed to craft a ring or necklace in that trait. When you re deconstruct jewelry, you will only ever obtain a pulverized form of its trait material, which you must refine into a usable form. So this means you can't just deconstruct a harmony ring uh, and get the um, get the trait material back. You will need you will get like the raw form, and you will have to get ten of those in order to create the the trait material. So I guess this is kind of their way of combating, uh, you know, just people, um, you know getting a lot of these trait materials and it makes it rare it makes it valuable so that's really nice to see uh you know for those traders out there who might be interested in flipping these trait materials uh there's good it seems like they're going to try to limit the supply that gets into the game um finally uh you can acquire trait items from other players so that's uh that's without that's pretty much what we've anticipated you'd be able to trade them now, upgrade materials. So this is a big. This was a big question uh, about how we are able to upgrade our our rings, especially from the end game PVE ears. We were very concerned that it would basically devalue the the uh, reason to do vet trials. You know, if you can just upgrade your your trial jewelry up to gold, why would you bother running vet uh, Ma of Lorcaj if you can just upgrade your blue Moon Dancer jewelry all the way up to gold? So this is hopefully, uh, this alleviates some of that worry here. So in order to upgrade rings and necklaces, you need to use the crafting station and have the materials. Uh, so from white to green, it is turn. From green to blue, it is iridium. From blue to purple, it is zircon. From purple to gold, it is chromium. You can acquire upgrade materials by refining dust, which is the base material, into ounces. When refining dust, you have a chance to acquire grains of the different ma upgrade materials. You must refine 10 grains in order to acquire a bar, and you can use bars to upgrade your necklaces and rings at a jewelry crafting station. You can also acquire grains by deconstructing jewelry of the same quality. So basically what this is, is whenever you... So um, for blacksmithing, clothing, and woodworking, whenever you refine raw materials, you have a chance of dropping um, any of the four different tempers. So, you know, uh, for woodworking or for blacksmithing, it's, you know, the, the honing stones, the dwarven oil, uh, the you know, tempering alloys. But here in jewelry crafting, it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of getting the uh, tempering alloy, for instance, you would get like a tenth of a tempering alloy. And then you need to get ten of those tenths in order to create the tempering alloy. And then you need eight of the tempering alloys in order to upgrade uh, your sword or your curse or whatever. So... This is basically their method of making sure that um, you know that trials is, are still going to be a good way of getting gold jewelry. Uh, even you know even if you run vet Ethereum archive all the time, you're still only going to get that raw material. So you're going to need to run you know vet Ethereum archive a lot of times because you only get one gold ring if you finish vet uh, non hard mode. You get two gold rings if you finish it on hard mode uh, vet. So you know this still values that trials as a method of gaining that gold jewelry so i'm very happy with this um this is very this is a pretty good idea in order to kind of create still instill some value in doing vet trials now this is going to suck for those of you guys who don't want to do vet trials you know who aren't ready to do vet mall or vet halls of fabrication um you know th it's gonna suck it's gonna be a huge grind in order to get those bars that you need to upgrade your purple or your blue uh, jewelry all the way up to gold um, but I think, you know, this is a fair trade-off because if you can just, you know, get eight of these bars by, you know, um, by refining materials, it it really, really devalues the, the point behind uh, doing vet trials. So this is a pretty good thing. Uh, this is very, very welcome. Uh, it just helps maintain PVPers. They, they, you know, they still, the easiest way to get the gold jewelry is still going to be from PVPing, and it's still going to, you know, put some value is into vet trials because now you can like, just get you can get your gold jewelry right away from vet trials plus if you do vet trials you can get the upgrade materials so you know it's going to be a good money maker for those end game pv years as well so very very welcome uh, i'm glad that they introduced a system like this now for the skill line itself uh, so these are the passive abilities engraver which is the crafting so this is the uh, six out of six uh, keen eye which highlights seams uh, jewelry extraction improves your chance of receive to receive materials while deconstructing jewelry uh, lapid lapidary 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 research reduces the time it takes to research a new jewelry crafting trait plating's expertise reduces the number of bars you need to upgrade your jewelry um, and obviously each passive can be in upgraded multiple times much like the existing crafting lines. 
And now we will go into the FAQs. So can I deconstruct jewelry that I have saved up before the release of summer set? No, you will not be able to. You can upgrade them and you can use them to research traits. Um, and this is the tooltip that will be released, uh, updated uh, for jewelry that can be deconstructed. So you can see here it has uh, just a line here that says this cannot be deconstructed. Can I transmute jewelry I own? Yes, you can transmute jewelry at a transmute station. Um, and again, this is permanently bound to you when you transmute, and you can only transmute your items to a trait you already researched. So just like normal transmutation as it already exists. Do existing sets drop rings and necklaces with the new traits? No. Uh, so they already covered how to get those new traits uh, up above. How can I become certified to do jewelry crafting writs? Uh, so there is going to be a new... Uh, NPC it looks like uh, an, high, uh, an Altmer Falarian and he can be only be found outside the crafting section of the city of Alanor in Somerset so that's how you become certified to do those writs. Are there master writs for jewelry crafting? Yes uh, so uh, you can uh, this is pretty much like master writs everywhere else. Is, crafting jewelry, is crafted jewelry bound to my account when created? No. Uh, crafted jewelry are unbound. Crafted set jewelry are bind on equip. So you can craft them for people and sell them or, or gift them to people. Can I find intricate and ornate jewelry? Uh, yes, you can find intricate and ornate. They convey the exact same bonuses as intricate and ornate right now. Can I see the jewelry I create on my character? No, you still can't see jewelry on your character. Can I research more than one jewelry trait at once? And the answer to that is no, and this is because the lap lapidary research passive skill does not grant the ability to research more than one trait simultaneously. It only reduces research time. You cannot research a trait for a ring and a trait for a necklace simultaneously. This is different to other crafting skill lines where you can research up to three different traits at once. Uh, so it does seem like it is going to take a lot of time in order to get your, you know, all the traits done for rings and necklaces. So I highly recommend figuring out which traits you want to research first and then uh, research those first because those have the lower the lower research uh, times uh, and so they will also be probably uh, the uh, speed up um, the speed up uh, what are they called timer things uh, here research scrolls <laughs> there's one right here uh, except only for uh, jewelry crafting so I suspect that a lot of people are going to buy these so uh, if you have uh, the trait that speed up then this passive that speeds up uh, research and ESO plus uh, then it'll take you about 70 days or t uh, two months and a little over a week and a half in order to research everything on a ring and so it'll take you about 140 days to research everything for a ring and a necklace uh, so that's going to be if you do the math that's about uh, four and two-thirds months so four months and about uh, three weeks so I suspect a lot of people are going to be either be buying those research scrolls uh, off of the Crown Store or saving up Brit vouchers to buy the ones that are on the Rit Merchant. Assuming, of course, that they come out with these scrolls right away. They might not, so we'll see. Um, can I acquire jewel crafting stations? Yes, from the Master Rit Merchant. Is uh, at, at Hazabai, at Hazabi, I, don't, I can never pronounce it. It's the golden vendor, basically. Are her wares changing due to the inclusion of jewelry crafting? Uh, they say no. Uh, they're going to keep an eye on the market and stuff and then uh, adjust things in the future depending on uh, what they see and feedback from the players. Uh, but for now, they're not changing uh, what she carries and how she decides what she sells. Are we still able to acquire gold jewelry in game without crafting it? Uh, yes, so you could, they're not changing the sources of gold crafted of gold jewelry right now. But again, they'll be monitoring things and, you know, taking a look at feedback on the forums and on Reddit probably as well. Uh, am I able to tell what jewelry can or cannot be deconstructed? Yes, there was that tooltip, so if it has that, uh, this cannot be deconstructed, then it can't be deconstructed. Are there jewelry crafting survey reports? Yes, uh, so this is just like any of the other survey reports. Um, they did say, though, unlike previous survey reports, these reports are written rather than drawn, but they still lead to uh, a large cache of rich seams with have a lot of raw dust. So that's it. Uh, that's all the new information. This is the detailed information for jewelry crafting. Obviously, this is not set in stone yet. The PTS has not been released. Somerset has not been released yet. So all this is still subject to change, um, but it uh, hopefully... Um, you know, it doesn't all change too much uh, because there are a, a lot of things here that I like. Uh, so, you know, the unique ways of getting the jewelry traits, uh, the difficulty in order to upgrade your jewelry all the way up to gold. You know, those are really uh, nice changes that uh, I think will really uh, help improve, you know, not just jewelry crafting, but also other aspects of the game that might be affected by jewelry crafting. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.